Hey guys, Mr. B here again, bringing another awesome math video. This video on the chain rule and radicals. So, I'm not teaching calculus this year, but uh, you know, in the past, one of the, obviously one of the biggest topics that you do when you're doing derivatives is the chain rule. And so, in this video, I'm just going to walk you through um, using the chain rule and through a function that it works really well for, which is a radical function. So, if you like this video. Um, give it a like. You can give a subscribe. I'm pushing now till uh, I'm on the push to 10,000 subscribers. So, and my uh, slightly unrealistic goal of 100,000. <laughs> we'll see if I ever get there. But I want to get one of those silver YouTube buttons. That would be fantabulous. So, um, if this video helps you in some way, give me a subscribe, and you can turn off the bell so you don't have to hear from me again. All right. So this is the chain rule here. So this should be a, a prime right here. Let me see. If I can get my marker out. Um, blue. So we should be a little primer right here. So y prime is equal to f prime of x. F prime of u. Wow, this video is making... Now I'm after pleading for subscribers, and now I've got a big old mistake here. So uh, y prime is equal to f prime of u times u prime. So that might sound a little bit funny, but the reason why we call it the chain rule is because it's used for composite functions. So a composite function is something like f of g of x, where you have another function inside of a function. All right, so um, it's best to see this with some examples. So for example, we've got a radical function here, but inside that radical function is a linear function. So I got 4x plus 2. So this is this is basically what I'll do in this video is uh, radical functions with a linear function inside. So the inside function is my u. So I'm just going to label that out here. Some people call this u substitution. I'm not really a big fan of that, but you know certainly some people might say take the derivative using u substitution. So if you want to if you want to do that, you can. Personally, I think um, that you guys should be able to do this mentally. And we'll get to that, and I'll show you how to do that in, the, in um, the second one. But I'll do this one the long way. So my u is the inside function, so 4x plus 2. So basically, that turns my fu into the square root of u. All right, so I've taken out the 4x plus 2, and I've replaced it with a u. So for the chain rule, what I need is the derivative of both of these. So I need my u prime and my f prime of u, because that's all the chain rule is. It's f prime of u times u prime. So when you have a root, it's always better to write it as its exponent equivalent. So a square root is equivalent to a exponent of 1 half. All right, so a square root is the same as an exponent of 1 half. So the derivative of this linear function is pretty straightforward. So anytime you have a linear term like 4x, the derivative of it is just the coefficient. So the derivative of um, u prime is 4, and then the derivative of this guy is nothing. So the derivative of 4x plus 2 is just 4. And that's going to work that way every single time you have a linear function. So if you have just an x, that's where your derivative is going to come from, the 4x, so the 4. Now the derivative of this guy is a little more complicated. So we got to use the power rule. So that guy, this one right here, is going to come down in front and be your coefficient. So it's going to be 1 half. And then to the u. And we got to subtract 1 off that exponent. So this turns it into 1 half subtract 1 is negative 1 half. All right, so there's my, there's my f prime of u. Now we'll simplify this a little bit in a second. So now to do my chain rule, got to remember the chain rule, of course, is just f prime of u times u prime. So I'll take this guy with its u still there, so 1 half u to the negative 1 over 2 and times my u prime, so my u prime is 4. So I'm going to do a couple things now. So the first thing I'll do is simplify the 4 times a half, so half of 4 is 2. And we want an answer in terms of x. So what I'm going to do is where I see that u, I'm going to put my 4x plus 2 back in it. So it becomes 4x plus 2 to the negative 1 over 2. 
Now, you might have a professor or a teacher that doesn't like you leaving negative exponents, which is probably most. And um, it all depends on what your goal is, guys. If you're doing like the equation of a tangent line and that's your ultimate goal, you do not need to rearrange this. You can go ahead and use this function now. But if your goal is to write a simplified derivative with no negative exponents or even um, uh, fractional exponents, then we need to do something else with this. So the first thing I tell my students, a negative in the top means drop it to the bottom. So um, that negative exponent all I got to do is put it in a denominator and it works the same way if the negative exponent was in the denominator you take it to the top so switching top to bottom in a fraction changes the sign of the exponent so now in the bottom it has a positive exponent now you might have a teacher who doesn't like you leaving these and you want to write it as a root so what you have to do now is remember that square um, square root is the same as an exponent of half. So I'll take that half and then change it to square root, and I get 4x plus 2. And that's my derivative. All right, so a lot of my students, especially starting out, like this way where they write the u down, and then they write the fu down, and then derivative, derivative, and then just multiply these two together. It's easy to remember. Then you don't even really need to remember this rule. Just as long as you do this, and put these two together, then I got my derivative. Now, but I always tell my students that it's much better to get to the point where you can do the chain rule mentally. All right, so, um, and especially if you, sometimes you'll have a chain rule within a chain rule within a chain rule. So, I mean, um, things can get kind of hairy if you're writing out all these U's and trying to keep everything straight. Or you have, maybe you just have a chain rule within a product rule or a quotient rule. So, let's do this one mentally. So I have a little sort of a little saying for it. This one has a negative 6 in front, and that doesn't change anything. We'll just tack that negative 6 here at the beginning and put a times. So when I'm doing it mentally, I don't worry about what's inside. All right? I just kind of forget about it. And all I think about it is what's the derivative of the outside function? And I think about, like, nothing being here. Just think about this as just the square root of x. So if I was going to do the square root derivative, I know that I'd have to write it like this. And you maybe you might write it like this to start with, which is the 1 half. So I think about, well, what's the square root of something, or what's the derivative of something to the 1 half? Well, it's 1 half with that something inside. I don't even care what it is. I'm just leaving a space for it. And then I would subtract 1 from my half and get negative half times the derivative of that something. All right, so I put that in square brackets because it hasn't taken the derivative. So that something is 4 minus 5x, and then 4 minus 5x. So I always think about, I'll say it one more time. So the derivative of 4 minus 5x all to the half, well, with the derivative of to the half, something to the half is 1 half something to the negative half. All right, so I just subtract one off that half to get that negative half. That's where that comes from. Times the derivative of what's inside. All right, that's something. So sometimes that makes life a lot easier. So I can simplify this right now, make it negative 3 out of that. And again, we got a negative exponent, but maybe I'll leave that for a step in a second and make that positive eventually. And now the derivative of this guy, so the derivative of 4 is nothing, and the derivative of subtract 5x is negative 5. So again, remember what I said, derivative of linear term is always just the coefficient of the x term, so negative 5. So negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. And then I want to bring this guy down into the denominator to make it a positive exponent. And then becomes positive half. And then all of a sudden, you can go square root 4 minus 5x. Mental chain rule. I'm telling you right now, if you can master the mental chain rule, you can do so much more complicated stuff. And when I say mental, I don't necessarily mean mentally doing the derivative. Um, of course, you will do it in your head, obviously. But, and I don't mean writing the answer right out of the blue. I mean breaking each step down 
without having the write out the u substitution stuff, right? So, um, but again, if the u substitution works for you, certainly whatever works. But I really feel that people hit a wall, and I've seen it a lot when students just will not give up the u substitution, and they just find something more complicated. So, for example, if you had something like um, a chain rule, maybe like this, where you have something inside. And then maybe it's the vibe. So this is a chain rule within a product rule. And maybe you have a trig function and there's something inside. So you got a lot going on. You got a couple chain rules. You got quotient rule. And these are fair game in calculus courses when you have more complicated derivatives. And your teacher is going to be expecting that you got you be able to do them. So um, that's a couple of examples of... Um, you know, using the chain rule with derivatives. Guys, I hope this helps. And like I said, support the channel. Give me a quick uh, subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. I'm making free content. So uh, appreciate all my all my subscribers and all my students who watch this videos on a regular basis. And um, I really love the comments. Uh, really keep me going. Sometimes uh, teaching is a thankless profession when you got crap little work and uh, not everyone is uh, necessarily on the same page with that. So I appreciate all the help. And uh, if you like this video, please uh, subscribe. Thank you very much.